to watch a Crappens and Reality Gaze Christmas Crossover Spectacular. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Say hi, Ben. Hi. Hi, <laughs> that's hi, hi. Jake over there. Say hi, hi. Jake. Hi, 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 hi. And that's Matt over there. Say hi, Matt. Hello, sugars. <laughs> okay, you guys take over. That was my intro. <laughs> Go, you guys tell him what, what's going on. I don't You're need to control everything hours. this time. You see? I've learned. I've could. I've grown. Three years already, so now it's the fourth one. And, right? This is number four for us. This is I four. think this is number four, right? Yeah. I think the first one we started, the first one we did was Holiday. Uh, the Netflix, Holiday. <gasps> then we did, I think, the one with the Pioneer Woman uh, pertaining to Peppermint, etc. Et like there was a Peppermint issue in a town. Mm -hmm. And then last year was the Lindsay Lohan one. And then this yes. one is this year we are <laughs> recapping the seminal cinematic masterpiece known as ladies of the 80s colon a diva's christmas colon yeah yeah that's colon. if jake wrote it it would be called ladies <laughs> of the 80s colon <laughs> it's like a it's like a paper you write in grad school they all need colons <laughs> there's a title and then a subtitle that's true <laughs> um, and I don't really think that we should just be calling it ladies of the 80s without doing this. Oh, God. I'm the of 80s. the 80s. Ladies are so bad I can't remember. I wrote down all the lyrics. You guys I have what a song. I live in minute by minute out of my head. Living minute by minute. I mean, that's because so sad, isn't it? Ladies they have. The, we're, we're just living by the minute. They. I. What I. So what I really like about this theme song. First of all, I woke up with it in my head. That was the observation <laughs> I've been waiting to say since we got up together on in this in this room here. I've been I'm wanting so to say, I've, I've been singing this at the song since I woke up. <laughs> but it also like reminds me of Alvin the Chipmunks because like it sort of has that kind of generic like Saturday morning cartoon like. <laughs> <laughs> like lyrics right because i think that one of the lyrics is we're the ladies of the 80s and we're and they're putting on a show <laughs> yes that is one of the lyrics <laughs> it's very like like watch out here we come like we're the chipmunks you know it, did oh. anybody write the lyrics down uh, i sure did let me i'll get them up <laughs> Thank God. Okay, so just real okay. quick, so these these uh, this is a crossover episode. Reality games, oh, yes. Walter Crappens. We're talking yes. about a Christmas movie. So welcome to Christmas week. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Christmas. Week. Yeah. We're um, on vacation right Hanukkah. now. So that's why we did this earlier for y'all. Yes. So that way it, when you're dealing with your mother in law or your family, or even if you hate your children, whatever, you can just listen to us instead and have a better yeah. time. Go in go in your back room with your pet. Because they're the only one who understands you at this time of year. Yes. And yeah. whoever you like best um, between Watch It Crappens or Reality Gays will have a contest. I'm just kidding. Oh! So whoever you want to, wow. just go to our Patreon. Hunger and Games. It's available as a video. These are all videos through our Patreon. Yes. Um, and, and also audio. So we'll be coming at you all week. We never know how oh, yeah. long these are going to go. That's we warn you now. They're offensive. Oh, lovely. And lovely, Ben. They're meandering. Oh. And they're not going to make much sense. And we talk over each other a lot. So to <laughs> all the <laughs> listeners out there, thank you for being with us. Good fucking luck let's get to some lyrics shall it's we like yes. christmas and dinner so, at your house with that people talking over each other yes exactly so as previously stated so we are recapping the lifetime movie ladies of the 80s a diva's christmas and there is this wonderful musical montage right in the middle which really should have this music should have been right at the top of the of the totally movie. agree so it's the song the lyrics the full lyrics it actually there are actually are some verses and the lyrics are <laughs> the past is in their rear view mirror tonight Living like the best is still to come. Mm. Groups back together and they know what they like because ladies mm. just want to have fun. Sassy when they talk, sexy <laughs> when they walk. They're younger than they've ever been, which is actually okay, let's, impossible. Let's just stop for They're a minute. They're gonna... Wait, hold on, pause. <laughs> yes, I just, we okay. need to analyze what's going on here. First of all, no one is younger than they've ever been. That's, that's just actually impossible. Impo like, that's just impo that's humanly that impossible. Mm -hmm. Also, sassy when they talk. The problem with this film is they weren't very sassy when they, they talk. They weren't. They were just kind of like, good to sassy. see ya. They're like, they these weren't. ladies are going to have some big trouble. And they're like, good to see you. I'm eating pretzels. <laughs> I know, like, there was uh, in the morning. What? That sassy was overpromised for me. That, that There was the overpromising sassiness and fighting was was such a disappointment it, for me it was not yes. there 
yeah, I didn't really understand the vibe of this movie. So either way, but they're younger than they've ever been. Okay. And they're going to strike a pose so everyone knows Diva's making history. They're the ladies of the a 80s, lady. living at large, minute by minute. They're the ladies of the 80s. It's their world, and we're just living in it. And then the best part. And they're putting up strings of popcorn. Yes. All eyes on them, no matter where they go. They're the ladies of the 80s. Always putting on a show. Okay, now, man. Sounds like well done. We were all texting each other about like what a jam this song was. And then Matt was like, I can't believe they didn't give credit to KT Oslin for her song, <laughs> 80s Ladies. So then he sends us this music video of 80s Ladies. This is how these lyrics begin. We were three little girls from school. One was pretty, one was smart, one was a borderline fool. I'm like, this is cute. Ladies from the, mm -hmm. their hair is gonna get bigger mm -hmm. and smaller and they're gonna get, fr they get old and one of them dies. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. Why would you send that to me? <laughs> That's... And and spoiler it, KT Oslin died of cancer recently. No, oh, COVID. Geez. COVID, not COVID. cancer. He died of oh, COVID? He died of COVID during the thing, yes. Oh my gosh, I, bless her heart. But that vid that music video, sweetheart. I'm you know a country queen. That music video is like a part of every uh gay boy who loved country music in the 80s experience because it's it actually leaned into the drag queen where i feel like this movie hinted at drag queen. like literally this slap montage is just taken from rupaul's drag this is a challenge in rupaul's drag race is it really yes they have a but, slap challenge remember that but like without these but without the camp factor but without the um, camp yeah you that, know yeah i that was the one moment of this movie that i truly enjoyed i was like oh, i wow. thought when when there was like a double when morgan fairchild does a double slap i was like i actually laughed and i was like oh my god this looks like it could be a funny movie i'm just gonna say this right now of the four movies that we have recapped for um our holiday extravaganza hey, this was by far the very worst this, I was, <laughs> this was I the worst far. i've never seen okay these <laughs> movies in general the genre is like they're terrible movies that's like part of the fun of it but this was like beyond terrible. I've never seen a movie with such low stakes. There were no stakes. Did they I spend it on all the talent because the lighting was terrible? The camera work was terrible. I don't know where they got this woman who played the ingenue. Okay, we're gonna have uh, a lot. I have a lot to say we about have a her. Lot to say. Um, I have a lot. I have a lot of questions about her backstory. <laughs> Yeah. And, yes. And his backstory that make no fucking sense to me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, like, how do you have a, a holiday mu a holiday movie set in Los Angeles that never has the obvious moment where, like, I can't believe it's actually snowing on Christmas in Los Angeles? They don't even by the way, they don't even bother having fake snow come down in their no. movie. Like, no. they just the don't even. The movie starts with that. Yeah, I, I, I also... don't... go ahead, Boone. I don't even know what the what the show what the series the, the movie within a movie or episode within an episode was about i i i don't think it was important to them <laughs> i i i no, think they it was... just created it for the women to fight and they didn't really fight they didn't I, fight I was... okay here's what i was telling them <laughs> i think that what happened was they were like oh my god we should do a thing where we get all these divas from the 80s they'll all be in a soap it sounds hilarious right the pitch is great they're all on a soap opera together they have to work together but they're they really hate each other how is this gonna work this yeah. should have been hilarious and then the guys they hired are great they're golden girls writers for fuck's sake you know yeah I, yeah. You know, I looked them up. And so it should have been like that. I think they turned in the script and then Lifetime. And yes, I am blaming your asses because you guys I think am. it's okay from they had for notes. every movie to be about women being chased down by Rob Lowe and stabbed to death or whatever. Ooh, but then God forbid you have some women get bitchy with each other. Because I know that Lifetime had a damn meeting where they were like, you can't have them be mean to each other. People watch Lifetime for good feelings. No, they don't. I, they walk it for they watch it for terror. I have a I, mother. I have pitched. I to have life. a mother. I, I gotta say to validate you, I have pitched to Lifetime and literally was told that. Wow. Really? 
Yes, yes. They yes. need to get along. We don't want anything too mean. And I went, this wow. is wow. This- Christmas. The, I have to say that you know what in, in some ways this movie felt like it was a script that the writer pulled off the shelf and was like let me adapt this to be a holiday movie like it was originally That's supposed exactly to be something about a like about a so, like soap stars coming back together maybe like a pilot and instead it's like oh let me repurpose this to make it into a holiday movie That's- because the holiday stuff was so wedged in there right. like it was really not about the holidays at all like they Man, they like quite- oh. Maybe we that should have a scene about first mold note. cider. <laughs> What's your that first was, note, Jake? That was my first note, was it seems like this was repurposed for, like, Mother's Day. Or it was like, or it was about yeah. another, another, or just about a soap, like, them getting together. And the Christmas aspect of it was kind of like, I was like the icing was glazed on. Right. Uh, yes. Well, just put a cone on it for a couple of weeks, because this dog's been neutered. Okay. I will t- <laughs> I also, I realized, I I don't know if this is appropriate to say or not, but in this day and age, I haven't watched a a movie that's made in 2023 that had just white people. Because this movie did. That's true. I I was thinking that too. I was like, there was nobody from the 80s you could have chosen that wasn't blonde and white. I mean, the only minority in this was fucking what's her bones with the darker hair. They had the, the, Hollywood Tonight Reporter, and he was stealing Scott every scene he was in. What are, I, actually, and, I love and Scott Donna Evans. Mills' daughter. Donna Mills' daughter. It, I love Scott Evans. I fanned him once in West Hollywood. He is you're, very You're hot. thinking of the wrong Scott Evans, sweetie. No, that's this, his name, Scott no, Evans. his name is Scott. His you know what, can I tell you something? Scott Evans of of this movie, he once followed me on Instagram, and I was very excited, and then he stopped following me, and I was oh. very sad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was like, wow, my content is bad is that bad that it's Scott good. Evans unfollowed me. We're <laughs> not talking about Scott Evans, Chris Evans' brother. No, no we're talking about Scott Evans. Scott Evans, Scott Access Hollywood Man movie. Yes. From Access Hollywood. I Got was it. saying too, like, because I wrote it in my thing, like, where is Jack Hay in this movie? Exactly. Where is good Jack Hay or call. even Marla Gibbs. like Anna Marie Hornsford or Oh my Marla god, Gibbs. Anna Marie Hornsford. Oh. Or like there's like just any number of people that they could have chosen, but Jack Hay would have been actually a wonderful she one. Would, they, would they needed fantastic. some. I think this movie felt sterilized. Maria Conchita <laughs> Alonso. It just needed. Yeah. To, it, pardon me. It needed like. I mean, just, Charo. Just put Charo in anything at this point. Uh, like, I don't even yeah, know if that goes yeah, with the casting, yeah. but um, like, I just I follow her Instagram, and she's amazing. So. I mean, this this also may speak to also the diversity issue of like the night, the evening soaps of the eighties too, right? That's true. Yeah, that's that is true. true. But it's not like there was no but. I mean, to to just be like, well, that was the eighties. There weren't black people then. I mean, Diane what the Carroll. hell? I'm not saying you're Diane. saying that, but I'm no, saying I know. Carol you know. did. But Diane no! Carroll died. I was gonna say Diane Carroll. She... Yeah, Diane Carroll died. Yeah. No. Yeah, it was a thing. Well, Jake just got up. I'm devastated. <laughs> <laughs> what about Diane Kruger? Um... <laughs> you can leave her alone. <laughs> Diane Kruger is still with us. She's gonna do the ladies of the ladies of Germany. Um... <laughs> don't don't talk about me like I'm not here. We're the ladies of Germany, and we do not celebrate Christmas unless we want to. I am very blonde. God. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, no, it's okay. Help me remind me. So, Lonnie Anderson was WKRP, right? Yes. Okay. Or easy even street. better, she was the one with Linda Carter, your other favorite, where they were detectives for a year, remember? And they were like, oh my God, let's sneak into that rich person's apartment. And then he would close the door and they'd put the credit card I don't in remember so he couldn't that. lock it. Oh, yeah. What was that called? Oh, I talked used to about love that, that show. Um, it was so easy good. Street? I, remember the dete- I remember that detective one, which was, yeah. By the way, also Kim Fields would have been a good choice. Partners Partners in Crime would have been great. One of the best, one of the best television shows. Only a season, as I recall. But God, what a show! I remember that she was an investigator. Yeah, 1984. I was one of the best television shows. (laughs) Eleven years old. Yeah, I was eleven years old, guys. Just think back. Me, looking just like this, exactly the same, (laughs) with hair and. Basically, everything else is exactly the same. Okay, I just wanted you to picture that, Carrie. I, I pictured that. So, okay, so Lonnie Anderson, Morgan Ch- Fairchild. How is Morgan Fairchild famous? I forget what she was on. Uh, I think she was on, was she on Dynasty? Knott's Landing? Either Knott's Landing, Falcon Crest, Dynasty, or Dallas. I'm one, of them, one of them. She was also like, she's been bombs on like things like Melrose Place. And like, she's been around. She's she was on arguably, Friends. 
Yeah, she's arguably one of the pers- people who's had like the biggest career after this, I would say. Yes. I yes, think- she she has worked. And I think that actually um, uh, she once was in a TV movie that I loved. Um, it was called, it was like a parody of TV movies. Falcon I think it was Crest. like, was it Falcon, Falcon Crest? Crest okay. it was. Thank you. So Morgan Fairchild was on, was on some Crest. TV, it was, it was like for Fox or something. And it was something like stay tuned or I don't, I don't remember what it was called, but I absolutely loved it. And I once went to a taping of that 80s show out here. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. It was oh, a spinoff. God. Of how how long was that on? Like, like five episodes, and I went to a taping. <laughs> I of think it. I think Partners in Crime actually outlasted that one. Yeah. That. Wow. <laughs> it probably did. did. And Morgan Fairchild was a guest star on that eighty show, and so she came into the audience to take questions. And I asked her, I was like, uh, I just like asked her something like, "Whatever happened to that TV movie? It was great." She goes, and she was just very active. She goes, "Ah, yes, yes, yes. That was a that was a wonderful TV movie. We had a wonderful time doing that. Thank you so much for the question. Okay, who's next? She doesn't remember it at all. <laughs> she doesn't remember it at all. It was all. wonderful, wonderful day. Wonderful day. Wonderful <laughs> way of play of filming. Pretty good in this movie. Okay, then there's Linda She Gray, was good. I, I, I was going to say, she's the she's best the thing, best. I think. I Donna she Mills, I think, did great, too. Donna Mills came in yeah. with kind of a weird accent that okay. she's doing. I, I'm not really sure, but I had Morgan was... With- with lots of the, I think some of it was dental work. Donna Mills yes. kind of had a Jodie Foster thing going yes. the whole time, like, and some like I really thought it was Anne yes. Margaret at first. I'm not. Yeah, even it was very Anne Margaret. I'm real. Her eyeshadow is so <laughs> terrible. Like they actually, like it actually looks like when I used to do, uh, uh, cause uh, when J- Jake can, well, Ronnie too can, like when I used to do opera in college, and the way people, you know, how someone in community theater or in opera would do their makeup so heavy handed for an audience of 200 because they're doing opera they like to space yes yes it oh, remember like the aging old, makeup that's my yes, favorite it looks like old aging like makeup. A, makeup. take an eyeliner and they put like they big it. lines on their face like, I'm yes. old now. <laughs> and apparently she wants to make her eyes closer together and do a crease so they literally just like the makeup the artist didn't even blend. They just drew like blocks above her eyes. Well, it almost looked thing. like Japanimation. Like it that it almost made her look animated. Here's the thing. I, um, we're not shaming her. We're shaming the makeup person. Or oh, whoever's yes. supposed makeup to make this yeah. better. Because did you know Donna Mills is 82 years old? Shut I'm up. Wow. This is nuts. That is, she looks, I mean, listen. They wow. all look amazing, you know, so no one's going to be coming for anybody's looks. We're just saying, like, the TV makeup. Like, if you're going to yeah. get all, they basically just rented an Airbnb and put a bunch of people in there. And they it literally did. were like, let's just make it up. Even the main guy, the young guy, the young person, didn't have a script. He was writing it as they went. Like, how hey, does that? I know. Again, I'm going to have lots of issues. A live, a they, live event with no script. It was, I, there I were a lot Linda of. Linda Gray looked the best, and she's the one you can tell who hasn't had any work. She has that. <laughs> She's Linda like, Gray. how dare you? I've spent Linda thousands. Gray, yeah. <laughs> um, Even if Linda she Gray, by the way, was looks like she didn't have. She work. was recently in Nope. I was like, well, look at you being in a in a uh, like an actual big movie. She's recently. my favorite of all because just because I love Dallas so much because I used to watch it with my mama and my aunt. Well, she was also <laughs> great in this. I think all the ladies were pretty good in it. I mean, they were, Linda Gray absolutely. was really funny. Uh, I don't remember Linda Lonnie Gray Anderson. being that great before. I just remember her being kind of boring. I don't know why. Linda, Maybe because she was the Lonnie Anderson was. was Lonnie Anderson, Anderson had some challenges, I think, yeah. with some of her Excuse line Excuse me, I don't want to give away a spoiler, but what she did at the end was bravery, okay? Purple <laughs> heart mean, worthy. That was one of the funniest fucking things. I had to pause it and run around the room <laughs> when it happened. Okay, wait, may I, may I circle back to something? I mentioned that Morgan Fairchild, I saw her in this TV movie. I've looked it up. The movie was called Based on an Untrue Story, and this is the plot description, Okay. Uh, perfume creator Satin Chow. That I is can't. her. She's, I'm done. I'm already, <laughs> I already changed the channel. Bro. <laughs> Morgan Fairchild. <laughs> Morgan Fairchild plays Satin Chow. So, perfume creator Satin Chow is about to reveal her new designer scent, Puppy, when she is cruelly struck down Puppy. by a rare condition called anosmia, which robs her of her sense of smell and could even kill her. With time fast running out, she begins a frantic search. But the only people who can provide the tissue donations she desperately needs, her long lost sisters, Corduroy and Vel- Velour. Oh, <laughs> this is, this okay, is, this is, is the game paradise. Paradise. And, 
And the other people in this movie are Ricky Lake, Victoria yes. Jackson, Diane Cannon, um, Dan Hedaya. Like you can see as a young gay child while this was a very important movie for yes. me. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I I would watch this. Diane Cannon, boy. <laughs> yes. I love she had to get a tissue replacement for her nose. <laughs> for a movie that took place in the 80s, like blatant coke that addiction. Is... And um, I don't think you're allowed to name yourself Chow, white blonde lady. I mean, what the hell? I think Come that on, was, guys. no, I think that, <laughs> I think she was like the, like she had married into the Chow name. I think if I remember ah, correctly. Okay. Or is but it I don't spelled remember. because like it's a, a puppy thing. So is it spelled puppy C -H -O -W? Chow? O-W, puppy Chow, right? That's yeah, it's C-H-O-W. I can't, yeah. oh my gosh. She was adopted. <sighs> um, and then there was like a boy toy in there named Crack. It was good. I mean, it was, it was <laughs> Crack. Well, <laughs> we'll there. revisit that on another right, day. We can revisit that. <laughs> TV movies, TV movies actually were really like fundamental for me. Like Lifetime movies and like Joanna Kearns, those Judith oh Light God, movies yes. were so like, were so like titles like She Cried No, um, <laughs> A Woman, A Woman's Burden. Meredith Baxter mm -hmm. Bernie, I think she's now just Meredith Baxter living her lesbian life. Well, that yeah. was always the thing, right? That was when you referred to a Lifetime movie, it was always like, what is Meredith Baxter Bernie in this? I mean, Meredith Baxter Bernie was in hundreds of those. She's fucking a movies. fucking goddess. And I she mean, was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, if I was friends with her and there was a text tone, it would just be fadonk or whatever it, whatever that sound is of punching in on the punch in clock. Just that fadonk. <laughs> it's me, Meredith. I'm here. What, who am I being chased by today, Tom? <laughs> what is it? Is it bulimia today? Do I need to start a fire? Oh God, I'm supposed to run from a person while I've got bulimia. Come on, guys, you're throwing a lot at me today. All right. The Betty Bro the Betty Broderick movies are are like at a class of their own. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are really, you know, um, really good. I, there was a period of time, I don't know if it was like NBC or if it was Fox or something, but there was a period of time where on Friday nights, one of the networks was airing these like very uh, kitschy kind of like romance novel TV movies, and I loved them. And I remember it. Do you remember those? There was one called The Secrets of Lake Success. Oh, that sounds so Ooh. familiar. But I can't remember which which one of the big three were doing it. But well, this one's called yeah. the Great Lakes. This soap opera, so that's interesting. So Little maybe they're all this connected. Show. Maybe they're referencing that. I think yeah. though, like those movies back then, there was a lot of camp, but also, and I think what this movie missed is they those movies played it seriously, or they played it. Re, they tr try to play it not. Well, yeah, they took it seriously, even though they knew it was camp, because that is camp. Is that the actors think it's almost serious and mm -hmm. this like like literally the winking at the camera or mugging to the like breaking the fourth wall <laughs> the little glockenspiel that happened yeah it just yeah i felt like this yeah. movie would have worked so much better if we i don't know believe it needed more camp <laughs> yeah it tried to be campy did. but it needed more of it needed more of the it needed, well, you know, it's let's, let's more be honest. It needed a lot of things. It also needed like a proper script. Let's be honest. Well, it needed, it needed bitchiness. States. I mean, you can get away with a lot, but if you just give us some bitchiness, that's what we're it watching yeah. it for. Yeah. We all want to see these divas like being bitchy with yeah. each other and dissing each other, and they wouldn't diss each other. Who cast Nicolette Sheridan to be a kind person? I've never. I want to <laughs> yeah. meet the fucking person in like, Hollywood. She was, she was the heart of Goldwyn. Yeah. Who? Nicolette Sheridan, she like, no. became famous for playing a Sydney Sheldon vixen and just went completely crazy from there. I mean, Desperate Housewives is probably her most recent yeah. huge thing. But, but come on, don't give me Nicolette and then make her nice. Nicolette felt actually a little bit like an outlier in this cast. You yeah. know, aside from the fact that she she's I think she is actually younger. Um, I feel like the the vibe of this movie was look at these actresses that are more or less like out of the rotation. And it's not like Nicolette is doing a huge amount of stuff. But I don't know. I feel like even though I guess Desperate Housewives is coming in on 20 years ago at this point, but it feels like it was just yesterday. I feel like Nicolette is but like not that, she's out of there. She's, this movie. she's a different league. It seems like she's had a career wise. She's had seems like a bigger career after her soap, um, her soap career. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it was that was a role that like maybe we could have given I don't, that would have been a Kim Fields or uh, Jack well, Kim K. Fields. Role, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah, it uh. 
I, I love how I'm speaking very seriously this, all of a sudden. Guys, we were very I know we're taking this very yeah. seriously. No, but this Jackie movie needed Aaron that. O'Connell, Ben. That's what it needed. Aaron O'Connell. Yeah, it really did. guy from whatever. Can we, can we just talk about – I think one of the main issues here, it may have just come from the network or something, is they kept saying – we need more of the the two the romantic young people to get together. So we need, about them. we need more of that. And because and so they said, so we're gonna help these with the ladies are gonna get them together. But like that, that's truly what kind of destroyed the momentum of the story. And yeah. and and it just every time we go back to them, I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> Well, well, I'll also, tell you what didn't destroy this movie in any way. Leg Day. Because that guy did not do it. <laughs> he did not do it. <laughs> I thought he was naked typing. I thought that Honestly, was, that was the best. That was the best I, part I, of the I movie. I will say the best uh -huh. thing this movie had is that it was not just a little. It was gratuitous shirtlessness. Yeah, from him. And, and I like, guess that's, yes. that's why and like it was unexpected. It, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. at least like they did that because, you know. Speaking of Aaron O'Connell, or the other movie, there's like a quick scene where the shirt's off. They walk into a room, but then they put the shirt on. This guy is just right. This was bravery, if you ask has me, there Ronnie. Be, yes. Has there been anything less sexy than <laughs> sexy typing, shirtless typing at a laptop? <laughs> like, also, honestly, fairly inappropriate. You are at work, sir. And you've thank gotten yourself you. down to underwear. That's an HR violation. <laughs> and you call a woman into your office whose name is Nell. <laughs> I don't know where they got the name of fucking hey in the wind. Hey in the wind. Yeah. Wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we like can we not can we not with Nell? I was thinking the same thing. I was like, and there's another reference, Nell. like Nell Carter. I mean, granted, they couldn't have cast Nell Carter, you know, no, she RIP, is deceased. But still <laughs> bang, bang. But um now <laughs> you, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> Loved her oh, so. Loved I went her. to see loved her as her. Miss Hannigan and Annie. Oh, oh she I bet that's that. <laughs> that's a good. That's a really eerily accurate Nell Carter. I, I heard her. she was fantastic in that. She was. She was pretty good. She was. They were having to. R.I.P. I'm so sorry to tell these stories, but we are telling old diva stories. Yeah, um, we are. They were having to like check her room allegedly back then, uh, for like coke and stuff like she was a mess oh, while she was doing it i believe but she was still so good i mean i grew up listening in the same time period of all these ladies i grew up listening to a misbehaving obviously on love a loop, it and the hair soundtrack from the movie the movie soundtrack oh my she god she was in she's that like one, a yeah. lead in that yeah she's like the lead ensemble chick in that she sings everything Wow, God, I love you. Anyway, but Jodie Foster now, you know, she couldn't really pull off Aunt Miss Behaven, and she, I don't want her in this movie either. <laughs> Jodie no. Foster. No. I do like to think of this, though, as like, okay, like the unofficial sequel to the movie now, which I never saw, but like I know it was like <laughs> Jodie Foster was a woman who was like raised, like, raised in the woods and has like by no trees. conception of yeah. by trees and it's like okay now she's been rehabilitated to civilization and she's um directing a soap uh, a re soap. uh reunion <laughs> i i thought for me it kept like i kept blinking and seeing evan rachel wood like the whole time and i did look yes. at this woman it, and that's what kind of got me and that's why I, I kept thinking at the beginning. There's a fly that crawling on your eyeball. Yes. There's a fly crawling on your eyeball. <laughs> I don't know. She was more interesting than she actually was. And it turns out this woman was a child star who yes. was in this. She was, uh, it, Taylor was she Ann in? Thompson. Um, she was yes. in like lots of little. She was in that movie, The Bucket List with Jack right. Nicholson. That was oh her big gosh. role. But the that's rest iconic. of it has been. Yeah, the rest of it has been her as a child, and that she had like two or three other lifetime movie credits. So they took a they took a big swing on this woman. I think yeah. she used the one in production. You know, I have to say, I did not see the Evan Rachel Wood until she took the hat off because then she was like a whole new person. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, now I see it. Now I see yeah, it. Yeah, and she's not like other girls because she got purple hair. And yeah. we know, we know that I mean, what does purple hair says, y'all. Hey, that back home where I'm from. It is. It's a big. Did you hear about Lynette? She got purple hair. Oh my mm. God! I hope she's not doing drugs, Darlene. She's I like know. a lady of the '80s, but not yes, a show. It is a big deal. Living minute happened. by minute. And did the <laughs> hot guy do anything? I don't think he did anything because everybody like. Even, I didn't look him up. He was. So I looked boring. Him up. He's to like me. a model. He's like a yeah, Australian, uh, Australian actor, soap person. You know. Did generic. he have an accent in the first of the movie, and did it go away as well? 
No, it was it, he had the accent all the way through. I, why, if he's Australian, what's the choice to be British? Because women love British men. They but think why would he not behavior. be American? <laughs> it is weird. He does play the son of. Oh, it's interesting that they. What? He was his character. I have British. He was. A, no, he was supposed to be. He British. started I off he sounding off British. British. It started off sounding British, but by the end, he was definitely Australian. Yeah. Oh, and my oh. accents are just so bad. I kind of all do. I just kind of mesh. I mean, Below Deck has really killed me. I just, I don't know where anybody's from anymore. I'm just like a yeah. Lucky Charms, you know, asking for alms in Oliver Twist. Like, you don't, but I just mix I it all together. You don't I see love the idea that Ronnie. You see people. <laughs> I love the idea that the soap opera, when it was in its heyday, was like, we need to cast a child for this show. Let's cast an Australian child. And That's what I was American thinking. Accent. Yeah. <laughs> just, just the work violation issues of having to have an Australian child over here and like to have school. And then he decides to go to American college and meets this. Again, I have, we, we can probably get into this later. I have so many questions about these two people's backstory. Yes. And, and he should have a twin me. brother, by the way. I think we all know he should have a twin brother because like the rule of like child actors in Hollywood is yes, you have only to work for so long. So you got to swap in that twin. That's you know? true. They should have a twin. They did you notice that the guy that played Lim Linda Hamilton's husband? I Linda Gray. Like, how, Linda Gray's Chris, husband. I'm sorry. Linda Chris Hamilton, Rackin. also a great choice. He's from yeah. the boy. He's from uh, the Blue Lagoon. Movie. The Blue Lagoon. Yes. He was Wait, part who of was it. I thought the, it was. Bruce the blonde Davis. guy that played, you thought it was he, who? He looked like an alternate David Chokichi. Yeah. Yeah, but a little more cat faced. Blue um, Lagoon, that was part of my sexual awakening. Yeah. <laughs> he had but sex not with Brooke, Brooke Shields. Shields. When they, no, no, not Brooke Shields. I think that's I want, not. I think that's very bad now because didn't Brooke Shields come out and say like that yes. was like totally she it was, was being exploited and stuff. Yes, and she was that. being exploited. I don't remember. Yep. I, don't I will remember say that movie. I was I was too I, young, so I never saw it. Uh, but I did see <laughs> the Secrets of Lake Success as previously mentioned. And guess who was in the Secrets of Lake Success? Ryan Phillippe. So, oh. No. Is that guy still hot? Let's hook him up. Uh, let me yes, tell you who's yeah. hot. Oh, uh, yes. Travis Burns, the guy that you were like, oh, he's just a model. He's whatever. He's so basic. He's hot. Yeah. If that's basic, I'll fucking buy stock in that. Sh Who sells basic? I love him. <laughs> he's so oh, cute. I don't even cute. care about your. He was cute. I don't care about missing leg day. I don't do leg day either or upper he's, day. Maybe he just. Upper. I just oh, thought he was boring as an actor. I think he's very hot. He had a hot. perfect nose. I loved his nose. Well, he, he served was like a, a hot version of Penn Badgley. So. <laughs> I feel like oh. I feel like he he like it's like like the promise of Penn Badgley is finally realized with this guy <laughs> Travis Byrne. Uh, the promise. <laughs> I you know? always I always had a thing for Penn Badgley, mostly because Ugh. of Dan. Dan, what's his name? Oh, I hated Dan. Uh, Dan on Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl. Oh God, but he's I, so I righteous. I liked him. I liked him like poetic and like brainy and dreamy. But yeah, that's I mean, what I'd happened like to Penn me. Badgley. I looked him up because I watched all of you, you know, that show, you, the stuff where he's yeah. a stalker. And yeah. he just says, you, I'm watching you. I'm watching you walk into a store. And then they kind of make him like this romantic, charming fucking stalker it was one murderer. Of, it was one of those shows that I watched and I, I watched the first season and I couldn't stop. And by the end of it, I kind of hated myself, but I oh, had to finish it. I had to finish it. And I'm, if there's another season, I will watch it. It's coming. Well, yeah, they're making another you, season. Because that's your type of man. Yeah, you kind of kind of choke me and look at me in the eyes while you're doing it. <laughs> that, and if you Jake murder wants, me, that's what happens. Jake wants Sorry. to get right to the edge. He wants to feel just a little unsafe. Yeah, as Ryan, long as Ryan I can Ryan Felipe is still cute. Pamplemousse. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Felipe, Felipe is still, still cute, and he still makes me feel unsafe. So let's go get him, Jake. <laughs> Have you go seen get him, Jake? His son, his son is a carbon copy of him. Uh, Deacon. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I and went the, to Nashville, and, and Ava uh, looks like Reese. I went to Nashville yes. a couple of weeks, and that whole town is an ode to. Well, I mean Dolly, of course. Everywhere's like, "What would Dolly do?" Um, she would profit because, like, literally everything says her name. But also, do you know who's really big there? Her, Reese Witherspoon. Everywhere Reese? you go, yes, like she has a show there. She has stores there. She has. Uh, they love their Reese over there. Mm. Good for her. I love Biscuit Love. If you don't go to Nashville and don't go to Biscuit Love, you miss out. It's amazing. Are they a sponsor? Dude. Biscuit Love. <laughs> Biscuit You're Love all, is actually. You, 
You always say things like they're a sponsorship. You do it on our oh, pod. I just, I just want to shout people out for doing it good makes work. Me furious because <laughs> oh please, that was the original name. Biscuit Love was the original name of the soap within the soap. Um, <laughs> you talk so it much like, about gun oil episode. on our show and pup mask. <laughs> And I don't say that you're advertising But I don't them. try to sell them like you do. You're like, go to Biscuit Love. Well, it's I swear to God, it sounds like you have stock in them. Speaking of Biscuit Love. Well, wait, I just want to say, you want to you know what you do sell constantly? Dick. Every time we talk <laughs> on, to you on the show, I leave like, you know what I should be getting? More dick. Every <laughs> single time. I, like, you are the best advertisement for just going out and getting some dick. I have to say, use coupon code. Reality gaze for some dick. Reality gaze dick. is brought to you by Dick. <laughs> so let's start recapping this this shit because we're just talking. We're, now we're just we're just gabbing <laughs> it's, and it's dropping been everyone. 40, it's, been 30, it's been forty minutes. Making let's, everyone let's, nuts. Anyone who is being made nuts is gone by now. And you know what? Good riddance. <laughs> Hi, so the bye. Rest of you. Do bingo so, cards of us now, and one bingo square would be they talk for 45 minutes and say without so that's talking the about first the show. two minutes of the movie yes listen we've never started the movie within the first episode, episode. of a christmas ever, ever. and we are ever. kind of at the end of this one so and i have to say <laughs> i have to say this preamble has greater stakes than the movie itself exactly it does it does, it does. so I okay mean, so you know well you know the song that we've been singing that's still in my head it's a great song but little known fact this movie starts with a different song that's also pretty good did you guys Hold write on. down we're going to start that with the new episode <laughs> everyone thank oh, you so much for <laughs> listening to episode one of our christmas recap we're not breaking tradition we will be back tomorrow with episode two you want these videos come find them on either one of our patreons thank you so much for being here we love you guys Bye. Bye.